a Monday night and you've just gotten off work. It's always hard to go to work on Mondays, but hey, you're already past the hardest day of the week. Next day is Tuesday and you're closer to Friday. And you want to have a little bit of a relaxation, so you go in and you turn on Netflix. There you see a show called I Wish I Never Did That. And the show was about a person who had a friend that was struggling. That friend wasn't doing well at all. And that friend depended a lot on the main character's help. Things got a lot better for that particular individual. They started to even do as well as the friend that helped them. Then they started doing a little bit better. But as you would find out, that friend started talking real bad about the person that helped him. They came out of nowhere. You will look at that show, turn it off and say, that was pretty good. But what if I told you that story is true? Rewind! That story is true because that is the story of Myron Gaines and Fresh and Fit. You see, there was a gentleman that helped him out a lot, an African-American brother by the name of Kevin Samuels. Fresh and Fit was a struggling podcast until Kevin Samuels came to Miami and gave them notoriety and gave them a base. They were not doing any views before then, but once Kevin Samuels brought them that audience, they went to the roof. And what did they do? They called Kevin Samuels gay behind his back and started disrespecting him. But even worse, they started disrespecting the people that helped them. The FBA are the original African-American community. And this is what Myron still does today. You stupid ass want the American taxpayer to give you guys the money so you can go ahead and run and use it to buy some Jordans, weed, Hennessy, and all the other stupid ass that you need to do. You guys literally are terrible with your money and don't want to work hard. Then you want to go ahead and insult immigrants, call them tethers, and all this other you know or tethers, you guys are foundationally black Americans. Well, let me get this straight. Hold on one sec. But it gets worse. That fucking Dikembe comes from Nigeria. I come from Sudan. Some niggas come from uh, other places in Africa, whether it be Jamaica, maybe the Caribbean, because you guys don't consider them black either. They're all fucking tethers, according to you dumbass niggas. They come over here. They become multi manners They become successful. They don't blame white supremacy. They just go get the fucking money. Their skin color doesn't keep them from success. And then they fucking lap you. And then you stupid ass niggas get on fucking uh, X and complain about white supremacy, white supremacy, tethers jacket our style, tethers jacket our culture. Fuck your culture. Now, he's really cooking, isn't he? He's talking about the fact that, hey, you guys complain on X all day, but these other immigrants come in all the time and they do better than you. Rewind! Let's look at the 1965 Immigration Act and what it allowed people like Myron to do. The 1965 Immigration Act has to be seen first and foremost as a civil rights measure. It was passed at that time when uh, the U.S. Congress was passing a variety of civil rights laws, of course, the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act. And those laws eliminated discrimination, racial discrimination, prohibited racial discrimination in public accommodations. Uh, and there was a feeling in Congress that that same notion of ending discrimination should also be applied to U.S. immigration policy. Up until 1965, U.S. immigration policy was heavily biased in favor of Europeans, and in particular Northern and Western Europeans. So tens of thousands of immigrant visas were reserved for Northern and Western Europeans, while Southern and Eastern Europeans, and especially Asians and Africans and Middle Easterners, had very little chance to immigrate to the United States. They were discriminated against on the basis of their national origins. But see, what Myron isn't gonna talk to you about is that civil rights legislation, which included the Immigration and Nationality Services Act of 1965, was aided very much by Martin Luther King and other civil rights activists. So that people who could come to the country, not just Latin America or Asian America, but people from Africa. That's right. The same guys who are disrespecting African Americans today had it not been for the Civil Rights Act of 1965 and the help of civil rights activists, African Americans, you wouldn't be here. But it's okay, let's look at some of the comments from Myron's thing. You have this guy, Barry Kett, and I'm pretty sure he's Ethiopian. He says, this is true, minus the vulgar language. You have this guy, Brain, from Nigeria, and I feel ashamed of these black Americans each time they complain about white supremacy. 
Like what the F is wrong with you? This is another person that benefits from civil rights activists in the black community. Get a lawyer. Say what you want, this might be mean, but everything he's saying is true. A guy by the name is Van Hagen. This was Hellfire, 100% dead on. And it's interesting. The same group of people that benefit off of your struggle and what you do for others talk to you like trash when they don't have any evidence of helping their own people. Ha! <laughs> Got <he. laughs> Fast forward. <laughs> then Myron still hasn't stopped with his beef with black women. It's a foregone conclusion almost why you guys are the least desired. Because if we looked at different points of data and use common sense and critical thinking skills, which a lot of you don't have because you have glue in your head all the time and it seeps into your brain and you can't think critically, anyone with common sense would realize, holy sh**, least desired on dating apps, least desired for marriage, high uh, rates of having uh, children out of wedlock, f these are undesirable. Then you add the fact that you literally weigh 187 pounds of average, weigh as much as a man, I wouldn't watch y'all either. So there he is saying that black women are unattractive, they're overweight and all of this stuff. When, of course, I've seen articles where black women are the less uh, desired on dating apps and all of that. And yes, there is a lot of black single moms. But the reality of it is, is that that should not affect your life at all, Mr. Myron Gaines, because, well, you don't live around African-Americans and you don't live around the FBAs. And so they're not in your life. You have a whole new crew that you can deal with. I mean, you're over there literally having clan meetings on X. So why are you talking about blacks? And then he got upset at black men. And it's, he says this, why do black men always feel the need to put the cape on for black women? STFU Kendrick, and this is Kendrick Lamar saying, don't let no white comedian talk about no black women, that's law. So see, Myron doesn't understand why black people are loyal to black women or why some black men are, and he's confused. And I'm gonna get to Tariq's response in just a moment. But let's look at who Myron is loyal to. They read him nothing, HT. Tell that you gotta go find it himself. Well, he's yes, sir. Listen, let's just so stick finding. with the Americans for now. And then we got this naturalization actor. Here. Like, bro, or you're with the standard guy. Yo, you're British, right? Bro, you, you don't know your. You don't know your. You don't know your. Yeah. Hey, Myron, you're in a hostile area, And I'm not area, scared bro, to have just... conversations with you guys because I'm not a person. Okay, well, so you're gonna have to either kick you're not going to have a or whatever. You're not going to have a conversation with him. That's what I'm okay, trying to well, say. Okay, well, this dude's a so whatever. British guy. You're like, dude, man. I know you're mad about 1776. Mate, men, black men yeah. are like most hey, likely to f*** other black hey, men. Hey, you're hey, black, you're son. He's not British. Hey, hey. He's not British. Kick, 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 kick this. That's the first mistake you made. He's not British. I gotta give a f about you. You fucking stupid followers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I told you he wasn't gonna have a conversation, bro. You just bought your I time. One your question. You guys couldn't keep your mouth shut. For you. One question. What was I it? I wanted to ask him about his fucking boats and hoes and shit. He runs fucking party yachts for incel men. You guys gotta oh, come yeah. correct with some thoughtful questions. All right. I'll let him back up here. I'll let him back up here, but only radio gets. To I'm call, sorry, right? sir. It's a white space. We've know that. They've, I know. They're the rules. No. You see, the same people that Myron is loyal to don't even want him, and that's one thing. Let's get to the point where Tariq and Myron have this little bit of a disagreement. Now, before Myron has come at Tariq, they've had a debate. Tariq won. If you're an immigrant, you cannot comment from, on from the Sudan. Situations. Yeah, if, you, if you're from somebody, you're from the Sudan, you can't say shit about a foundation of black American. Nothing interesting. At all. Interesting. Nothing. Interesting. Let yeah, me, okay. With you Tariq, can't say so nothing about us. Let's use your logic. Not one word. Let's you lose your logic. A failed homeland where people are starving. You can't say shit cool. about us. Yeah, cool. That's how let's that let's works. use your logic. Then. <laughs> that's how Wait, that let works. me ask you a question. Uh huh. Do you have to be a mathematician to say one plus one is two? Oh, no, 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 sir. No, 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 no. That's no, 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 no. That's a no. non sequitur. It has nothing to do with anything. You come from a failed homeland where people are over there starving, and you you haven't figured out one how to stop the people from starving. So you can't come over here and talk about oh, it. <laughs> And then Myron was trying to say that, hey, I'm bigger than you. You know, I'm not going to pay you for a debate because Tariq wanted him to pay for a rematch. But then Tariq laid this down. Not many people can just get on a stage by themselves every day 
and get tens of thousands of views. No gimmicks, no strippers, not beating up OnlyFans girls and yelling at none of that gimmicky nonsense. It's a, only few people can do that and get those kind of views. That's relevancy. That's relevancy. And then I can take that same relevance offline. That's why I can put thousands of people in movie theaters around the country, sir. You can't do that, Myron. You can't get thousands of people to go to movie theaters around the country and sell out movie theaters simultaneously in different cities. You you don't have that. You understand? You can't have thousands of people come out to Washington, D.C. for an event like we did last weekend. You can't do that. You don't have no clout, dude. You understand? That's why you have to pander to the alt-right. You have to pander to that dweeby, racist crowd. You got to pander to them. The lowest rung of the internet. You see, let me kind of get to that, Myron. You see, you don't have to like Tariq or, or anybody else, but see, the reason why Tariq is more valuable than somebody like you is he's built a community amongst people that are loyal to him and likewise. That's something that you can't do, Myron. You see, you have to degrade yourself and degrade your people for anybody to do anything for you. And you don't have any pull. This is exactly why when the Democratic Convention came to interview people in the black community, they were looking at interviewing people uh, like Tariq and Dr. Umar Johnson. You were at the Republican National Convention and nobody would even pay you any attention. <laughs> See, that's the fundamental difference, bro. And the reason why is because you're loyal to nobody. No one is loyal to you. And the only thing you're loyal to is to the people that hate you. And this is why Tariq smashed you on this comment when you put, why do black men always feel the need to put the cape on for black women? Tariq Nasheed says this, horror music. We foundational black American men put the cape on for black women the same way you put the cape on for white bussy. Can I get a ooh sound effect? Ah! So you don't mind going out there getting your cheeks clapped by the white supremacists and doing anything you can to bounce on white cucumbers and putting them all in every you know little crevice that you see. But you don't get nothing out of twerking for them. That's why you are where you are now. You basically do all the dog whistling, all the stuff for free for people that even hate you. Not only do they hate us, they also hate you. This is the reason why they'll let you do all of their dirty work and bashing. But let's just say, for example, if they were to get America and control America and who would have to go, you'd be back on the boat going with us, bro. Like you don't get that, but that's okay. Keep twerking it up for Zaddy. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna kick you out another Twitter space and guess who'll be there to cover it? Me! So guys, what do you think it's your boy Ashley D. Jackson? Back editing in with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. All right, but you should follow that. You do subscribe to the bell. We're out.